This is an important video, and I think that you guys are going to like this video. Who suffers from anxiety? Well, a few days ago, that panic attack that I had scared the fuck out of me. And it made me realize something. It made me realize that not only do I suffer from this disorder every single day, but no matter what medications I take, it doesn't seem to just go away. It doesn't seem, no matter what kind of walking I do, no matter what kind of therapy I do, no matter what kind of exercise I do, I can still have panic attacks. Now, going to a, actually, I haven't been to a cardiologist since I've been to Los Angeles, and I still haven't gone to a cardiologist. To the ER rooms, yes, um, for panic attacks. Now, when, when you're having a panic attack, it really, it feels like you're dying. Why can't the uh, people that don't have anxiety understand and get it through their thick fucking skulls that anxiety, when having one, it feels, it actually feels like you are actually dying. The pulse goes up, the blood pressure spikes, your flight or fight response kicks in for no reason. Nobody's attacking you, you're not getting attacked, you're not having any other problems, you're not dying physically, but at the same time those symptoms of anxiety are there. They're so strong when you when you have them. The the symptoms, the symptoms, it's the symptoms that cause the anxiety and, and people just don't listen. You know, that's the problem with this country and, and the world is that people don't listen to people with mental illness. They think they're all crazy and they can't think for themselves. Now that's some people but not everybody. Listen, I have been having anxiety attacks since at least 2007. I, I probably have had them before 2007 but didn't know what they were. Now, when I've had these anxiety and panic attacks, um, I used to, uh, when I'd have an attack, back when I was a child, my attacks were of, um, I would leave the classroom and I would go into the bathroom and hide. And it seems to me that I've had anxiety a lot longer than I thought. But 2007 is when they told me that it was a panic attack. Now, when I look at the, look at my old videos, and I look at the situation that I was in, the violent situation that I was in, the, the, the physical abuse, the mental abuse, um, I realized that that was a trigger. Thinking about it can trigger an anxiety attack in me. When I moved out to California, I didn't expect to stay here. I expected to stay here for a couple weeks and then go back to San Antonio. Um, I was in fights with my aunt. My aunt that doesn't seem to care about anyone but her fucking self. Um, seems to get angry at everybody over the littlest things like a fucking fork that I still had in my room over the night and then I was going to wash it in the morning. You do the same thing, but you don't complain. We don't complain to you. Um, also, anxiety is... I don't know what anxiety is. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to call it. I don't know what to say. I don't, I don't know what to do. I haven't even gotten on my laptop in three days. I barely get on my desktop just to watch uh, prank videos, which is pretty uh, calming. I get on my tablet a lot. I'm actually recording on it right now, but Xanax, Ativan, Diazepam, Valium, Clonazepam, Clonopin. As addictive as they are. They're the only ones that really do stop anxiety from pretty much killing you. 
pretty much killing your mental. People who have chronic anxiety like me and uh, millions of others, those kind of people, they suffer every day. And, and, and the sad thing is, it, it depends though. When I'm out traveling, I don't have an issue because my mind is focused on the road. But at home, it just gets into your brain and then it just gets worse and it just gets worse and it just gets worse and then it just gets worse. And certain foods I eat makes me feel like shit for some reason. So now I'm avoiding almost everything, which is probably not healthy, but after all these years of suffering, you just don't give a shit anymore. You don't give a shit about your health. You don't you don't seem to care. And honestly, I I'm starting to not give a shit. That's the honest truth. I just don't give a shit anymore. I care about other people, but I don't care about myself as much as I used to when it comes to medical. I just don't care anymore. Why, why should I care if, if my anxiety attacks are going to continue? People say, well, don't give up. How can a person keep living their lives when it's full of anxiety and you have to pretty much suck pussy to get any medications you want? Or if you're a female, you have to pretty much suck penises to get whatever you want. I'm just telling the truth. I'm saying how it is. This meant this whole issue with mental illness is ridiculous. This whole pharmacy thing with benzodiazepines with people with chronic anxiety, this whole addiction thing, this whole withdrawal thing, it shouldn't even have to happen. It shouldn't even have to happen. People people shouldn't have to suddenly worry every day, well, what if I take too much Ativan? Or what if I take too much Valium? Or what if I take too much Xanax? What is my doctor going to think? They're going to suddenly take me off. When people have chronic anxiety, they can't control the physical aspects of chronic anxiety. Some people try to use beta blockers to control their anxiety. What they don't realize is by using beta blockers for an extended period of time, this is worse. This can be just as bad as Ativan, which is often not worse. See, what happens is your body depends on that pill to keep the blood pressure down. So what happens when you suddenly stop taking beta blockers? There goes your blood pressure. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. You can't suddenly stop taking beta blockers. You can't suddenly stop taking them because then your body's dependent on them. And it could actually end up worse than just withdrawing from the benzodiazepines. Because that's affecting your heart rate and your blood pressure in most cases. In some cases, some of those uh, blood pressure medications can do that to you. Do they work for anxiety? Um, they don't work on me. None of them do. And I've tried at least six or seven different blood pressure medications. My blood pressure is normal when I'm not anxious. As weird as that may be. Certain foods I eat seems to trigger my panic attacks. It, uh, some, Maybe I'm allergic to something that I don't know of. I never break out into hives or rashes, but I, some of the foods I have tend to make me anxious. And uh, not being around a lot of people don't cause anxiety. The, what causes anxiety for me is not living in a normal environment causes a lot of anxiety. Well, people say, well, why don't you get on your own? Well, you just can't get on your own in Los Angeles. You can't. You have to make at least three or $4,000 every two months to, uh, to live by yourself in Los Angeles. Unless somebody gives you a house, unless you have an extremely well-paying job that's not minimum wage, unless you were working for... Um, an electronics company making lots of money unless you are a police officer you're not getting your own house here you will not get your own house here you would have to live with other people there is no I get to live in a big house by myself aspect of it which would kind of be boring anyways but it's you can't live by yourself in Los Angeles if, unless you make more than three thousand dollars a month if you make more than three thousand dollars a month you can live in the metro area of LA do I want to live here? No. Do I want to live in Los Angeles, California? Fuck no. But, I'm stuck here, and I don't like it. I don't like this area. 
the people mainly is what I don't like. The weather's fine, and the beauty of LA is actually unbeatable compared to some of the other places of the country. Now, anxiety, in my opinion, is triggered by financial issues. It's triggered by um, mental abuse. You know, I'm getting too old for this shit. I gotta move. Um, and people, the lack of people understanding what an anxiety attack feels like. The lack of people understanding is what causes more anxiety in us. Because people tell us to calm down. There's no reason to, you can't calm down during a panic attack. People will freaking throw stuff. They'll do stuff. They'll, 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 they'll think they're dying at the hospitals or at home the the parents get concerned i have an example there's a person that um i know that lives in um the valley here of los angeles and um that person suffers from panic attacks and he's not even an adult that person has multiple panic attacks i don't know how many panic attacks he has exactly but i know he has a lot of panic attacks and anxiety attacks uh and he actually used to live in Texas, but he moved back to California because of the lack of mental health treatment. So his uh, parent decided to come back to California. I don't. I, th I think he's been doing slightly better. Last time I talked, you know who you are. Um, the lack of mental help for people with anxiety is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The mental health system for people who cannot afford it, it's ridiculous because this is supposed to be the greatest country in the world. But is it the greatest country in the world when you have a fucked up mental health system? Uh, you throw people with mental illness in jail in smaller cities that can't afford mental health facilities. You abuse uh, the mental health system by uh, forcibly injecting people with medications they don't want or need, giving them antipsychotics when they don't have psychosis, giving them antidepressants when they're not depressed, but saying it'll work for anxiety. I have been on almost at least 20 to 30 different antidepressant medications. Some of them have caused me to go absolute batshit insane antidepressant medication these antidepressant medications don't do shit for anxiety for me maybe for other people they're lucky they don't have it as bad as I do with the anxiety I am getting clammy in my skin talking about this is bullshit I'm too old for this shit I'm getting tired of it actually I'm too old uh, to, to suffer that I, I this is going to be for the rest of my life. This doesn't just go away. You don't understand. Nobody understands this. And only the people that suffer from anxiety do. You can be 30, 40, 50, 60 years old before anxiety might start to decrease. That's when your brain starts to stop functioning normally. You know, it starts to deteriorate after so many years of using it. You know, it's sad. It's, it's so sad that we have this debilitating disorder and it affects us every single day while other people in their lives don't have to worry about this anxiety. They don't have it. Isn't that unfair? Don't you think that's just a little fucking unfair? Just a little bit? While other people get to live their lives normally, they get to go enjoy themselves. People have cancer. Some people have the worst diseases you could think of. And then there's us. People that have anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar, uh, multiple personality disorders, psychosis. And what has happened to us over all these years? What happens? They throw us in the loony bin. They take away all of our rights. They don't even allow access to electronics. They lock you down in 72-hour holds here in the United States, depending on what you say to them. And they might even lie and say it anyway, just to piss, just to get, just because you pissed them off. And that's happened to me two times. Um, it's sad that this country is supposed to be supposed to be one of the greatest countries, yet it hides so much information from people, and also does not care about the mentally ill. 
This country does not care about the mentally ill. The, the politicians here in this country do not care about the mentally ill. If they could, they'd just kill us all. I'm pretty sure of it. It would help. I ain't saying it, but uh, if all the mentally ill people were not on this planet, including me, uh, the world may be a better place. But we're stuck here with the rest of everybody, but we suffer while they do not. Yeah, they might have financial issues, but you don't see them going crazy about it. Yeah, we they may have issues, but you don't see them going crazy about it. You don't see them having depression over it. Oh, boo-hoo. Uh, I was abused when I was a child. It's going to affect me when I'm an adult. Boo-hoo. Yeah, I don't like to ride that train either, but it really does affect us. It really does. We're very sensitive. Human beings are very... You think that we're tough, but we're not that tough. Mentally, you can fuck up a brain pretty fucking easily, mentally. And it's so sad. All these people with mental illness, um, they get mistreated. They get abused. They get injected with psychotropic drugs that shouldn't be injected into them. It's it's, it's really sad, and the government's sad about... The, it's, just, it's just... The whole thing is just sad. It's just ridiculous it's, it's I'm sorry but the the illnesses themselves are pretty bad the schizophrenia the, the, the paranoid schizophrenia the people with paranoid schizophrenia they think that everybody is out to get them and they end up attacking people because of it bipolar people get angry for no reason I could literally I could pick up this flashlight if it was somebody else's that had bipolar and they would have a shit storm over it and that's a fact and then they would cry and then be happy again. For me, it's anxiety that's constant. It's a constant anxiety. Unless I take the benzodiazepine, I have constant anxiety. It could, it's, it's not necessarily worrying. It's just physical. When your thyroid is fine, I've checked. I have checked under the storm, under the radar, to see if I had any physical conditions that would cause excessive physical symptoms of anxiety and they've never found anything wrong except for low vitamin D which I already I've already gotten back up to a normal level but that was that was a couple years ago but still vitamin D and vitamin B12 are important but take too much B12 and you could have anxiety take too much B6 and you could have anxiety especially B6 take too much B3 I think it's thiamine I'm not sure though 100% Regardless, uh, maybe the politicians are mentally ill. They're sociopaths. Maybe. Some of them are, at least. Donald Trump is definitely a sociopath. He's crazy. He, oh, he's definitely a narcissist. But that's, that's, it's just a sad, it's sad. It's, it's so sad that, uh, we can't properly get medicated. Okay, somebody has cancer, what do they get? They get the treatment. Somebody has uh, AIDS. They get treated. They still, you know, die, but they get treated. But somebody who has a chronic mental illness can't get benzodiazepines because they're addicted to them, or you're taking too much, or you're taking, or you're not taking them enough, so they stop it. And benzodiazepines, although can be dangerous, unfortunately, they're the only things that work. Everybody keeps saying to try these natural methods. Those are mental things. You, you, it, for people who have anxiety that are biological anxiety, it's going to happen. It's going to keep going. It's going to keep going. It's not going to stop ever. Unless they somehow come to the cure medication. You cannot stop generalized anxiety. The only way you could possibly do it is if you were isolated from the world and you had medication, you could probably wean yourself off the medication because you have no external stress. But there's, it's almost impossibly isolated from the world in today's society. Regardless. Some of the foods that they have here in the United States are causing more anxiety than warranted. 
some of the out natural stuff that they put in our food is causing anxiety. That's unwarranted. Um, I'm going to look up right now anxiety statistics worldwide. And well, the first result that came up was uh, 1 in 13 suffers from anxiety. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Look at this. <laughs> well, would you look at that? <laughs> this kind of figures out right here. The United States has the highest rate of mental illness. Let me tell you why. I'll tell you why right now. We're not the most dangerous country. I mean, it can get pretty dangerous in this country. Don't get me wrong, but it's not the most dangerous. Financial, biological, and the unnatural stuff in the food. That's all common sense. Common sense sense. Listen to this. Netherlands, 14.9%. Belgium, 12%. Netherlands. Germany, 9%. Ukraine, 24.5%. Ukraine, a lot of war going on, a lot of drama. Italy uh, it has a lot of westernized stuff. I could see that. Mexico, 12.12% have anxiety. On natural foods. Colombia, a lot of gangs, a lot of kidnapping. Uh, that's probably why. That that uh, seventeen point eight percent. That's fucking insane. Maybe all the drugs too. <laughs> it's funny. Canada's not even in the top. Uh, it's not even in the top fourteen. Japan. 8.8% of people in Japan have mental illness. Anxiety, mood disorders, impulse control, and substance abuse and dependence. Look at the United States and Mexico. Mexico supplies the United States with drugs, and Colombia supplies Mexico with the drugs to give to the United States. So practically, that's probably why it's probably the highest. My opinion. It's the drugs. Uh, it's the uh, fast food. It is the unnatural chemicals found in our food, and it is the violence that's what's causing it. Nigeria, 4.7%. I can understand that. That's very strange, though. Lebanon, 16.9%. Why does Lebanon have mental illness? Addressing mental health needs in Lebanon. This is crazy. It's very weird. You wouldn't expect that. Well, there you go, guys. This is why anxiety is out of control in this country and those other countries. Especially, you know, like Australia. Any westernized type of country will have this issue. This needs to be addressed. This needs to be addressed by people who actually give a fuck about us. And we actually give a fuck about them, but they take it in the wrong way. So thank you guys for watching. This has been the Planet Earth here.